made his way as God provided it. He refused bitterness and despair. You see, this is where forgiveness comes in. A degree of forgiveness. If we hold that anger, the wrong that's been done to us by our siblings, by society, we get consumed by it and we stop doing, we stop doing, we stop believing and trusting in God because in the end, it's blame, truly. Isn't God in charge of everything and so it's wrong in my life? It's his fault. That's what blame and, and uh, judgment brings us to. But he didn't do that. He refused bitterness and despair. And he trusted. And so he bloomed. He bloomed multiple times. See, Joseph wanted to seize God's future. Not his future. He wanted to seize God's future and what God was going to do. Have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered what was God thinking when? Sometimes we think that about mosquitoes or flies or things like that. But sometimes we think about ourselves. Why in the world am I not like somebody else? Why wasn't I given this or that? Why wasn't I given this opportunity? Why can't I get a break and get a job like that and move forward? Because we would really like God to answer to us, wouldn't we? That's what we'd like. We'd like God to say, you know, I hear you. I, I'm really sorry about that. Here, let me make it right. Does God ever say that to you? No, me neither. He doesn't do that. God never apologizes. Have you noticed? He doesn't. Not anybody. You see, we're always waiting for God to rise up. But he's already wise. He's already true. Because Joseph was in a hopeless situation, in the bottom prison cell of a prison, put there by the chief of the king's guard, he had the hope in a God because he was hopeless otherwise. God had made him promises. God had given him vision of what he was to be. God had given him skills, a place, and purpose, and had worked in him before. He gave him those gifts for a reason. Okay? And Joseph believed him a good guy. And so he hoped. He hoped beyond any proof that he could make, any understanding that he could see for himself. He hoped. You know, the world that you and I live in is every bit as confusing as the one Joseph had. Because of the situations we see around it, our relationships we have, that when push comes to shove in society, sometimes the poor get trampled, the weak get used and abused and thrown away. The strong come with political power and they wrangle the advantage. We have the buying and selling of influence. You know, the billions of dollars that we see pass through the hands of what they call the super PACs that influence our political future. Those folks up on top of Walmart, oh, not Walmart, that too. But Wall Street, that one, I'm sorry, Charlotte. That's okay. 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 Good? She works at Walmart. Um, the folks on Wall Street who, who wrangled the stock market to profit for themselves got the country in a terrible jam thinking that they were going to fail. They got bailed out. And what is it, two or three years now? They claim to have paid it all back. All this time. They paid it all back to the government. And all this time, I, I saw the statistics, the, 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 the uh, wage and salary scale for the top executives has not just gone up, it has gone up. Uh, and all the time, little Joe, uh, who has his money in the stock market, how do they come up with billions of dollars to pay back the government and money to give these big raises to the top dogs, but there's no profit for the little people? How is that? That's the world we live in, isn't it? Isn't it true? We live in a world that seems like it's unfair and we're trapped and crushed. But we're given the same opportunity that Joseph did. You see, God has blessed us, you and I. For certain things. Certainly I'm not skilled like Joseph is. And I've proved that over the years. But God has given me something and I must use it. And you as well. We have to live in the hope that we serve a good God who wants good for us. And wants to do good things. And that he's blessed us for a reason. And as we are part of his kingdom, we will move forward. We cannot, we cannot settle into anger. Into the frustration, into the blame. We can't give ourselves that. We must give ourselves the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. We 
we have a sorrow in this world. The things have gone our way. We have a sorrow that people who are good that we know have been hurt. There has been losses and difficult things. But we hope to trust there's a good God. So trust him. Bloom where you're planted. Take the things that he's given you and use them in his kingdom. He'll make them what he wants. Suffering. Bloom where you're planted and seize God's future. That's our hope. Our invitation is Jesus, I come. And that's exactly the attitude that we have. We must have, we must come to Jesus Christ as our King, as our leader, as our purpose, as our hope. We come to Him in the hope that He will make a way for us. We give up our anger, our fears, and our losses to Him. Then it can heal us. He invites you to come. Open your heart.